Hey, Vakami, Jeff here with a all jazz video, all jazz video. So recently, I uh, hit a couple of thrift stores in town, and one in particular uh, apparently had bought somebody or had gotten somebody's collection. So I ended up uh, getting a good chunk of contemporary jazz releases, the kind of stuff that I cut my teeth on and that I enjoy. And so um, anyway, I'm going to show those and tell the story because actually these came from two or three different places one place in particular but there's a couple stragglers in here from another place or two uh, over the past uh, week or two or three two two weeks i think anyway um so yeah we went to a place down by the beach there's a record store that's a little newer we went there once i've shown stuff from there i went there one time so we went back down there a couple weeks ago and as we did last time my wife got down on the floor and was flipping through the dollar bin i was going through the top stuff and uh, we ended up picking up a few things she immediately pulled this out and said hey do you have this this is nelson rangel uh what is it called to begin again and i did not have this i don't have anything by nelson rangel on vinyl now he's a saxophone player you know he's in the line the kenny g type line of you know sax jazz players um, we saw him in concert in the mid 90s when we lived in new york so I was familiar with him. I have a few of his CDs. I don't have this on CD or any of his stuff on vinyl. Never see his stuff on vinyl. So I was kind of thrilled uh, to see this. And it was in the dollar bin. And it was in pristine condition. Pristine condition. So I was thrilled about that. That it was in such great condition. So I said absolutely for a dollar we grabbed that. Now moving on. Uh, I think. Yeah there's one other thing from that store. But that's further down. So then, this most recent weekend, we went over to a part of town we've never been to. Um, we're, we live in like a, what do they call this, a seven cities or whatever area. And there's some, you know, towns that we don't frequent as much. And so we went over there to this one. Um, she said, hey, there's some thrift stores over here in this town. And we've never been really to the thrift stores in that town. So we went over there one Saturday morning and checked it out. And so we went into this one. And she only had like two bins of records. But I'm noticing that it's not... Your typical thrift store stuff. It's not Percy Faith and Show Tunes and and all of those guys. It's uh, it's got some hip hop stuff and some things along. And then I started running into some jazz stuff. Um, now I got to talking with her. I pulled them all out, and you know she made a good deal with me on them. And turns out she's not the type of thrift store that actually um, accepts donations. Her stuff comes from, they buy out storage sheds, lockers, you know, uh, storage units, things like that. They, uh, so she purchases lots of, you know, basically big lots of stuff. And that's how her stuff comes in. So apparently somebody in the storage unit or something lost a good chunk of their mid-80s contemporary jazz stuff, which is exactly the era that I was into, into jazz. I got into jazz in around 85, 86, 86. I uh, met a guy who turned me on to some bands like Spire Gyre and stuff. So so there's a lot of stuff in here that I don't have, some stuff I have by these artists. So um, she had a, a couple David Sanborn albums. So I grabbed this one. This is his 1982 release. And um, again, all of these albums were like just pristine condition. So I was thrilled to have that. This one was his 1983 album. Now, I have a couple that I've picked up over the years of his stuff, and I think they were like the 84 and 85, so it was kind of uh, interesting that these were kind of around the area that I got there. And he's another sax player, another, you know, Dave Koz type, Kenny G type, more of a Dave Koz type, uh, you know, a little more, less romantic stuff, but, you know, that type of stuff. And then this one was the most recent that he had to eat close up, the 1988 album. So, yeah, I have a couple, like I said, that were in between those and these so it's kind of like hey let's fill in this little 80 section um and again mo most of these i, I took them off but almost every one of these had the shrink wrap still around it that was open and the shrink wrap was kind of torn in places so i just got rid of it but they were still the covers were still in the original shrink wrap the albums were pristine now this one uh, you know i got it because of david sanborn um this is 1986. I did not know who Bob James was, but I assumed David Sanborn is going to be jazzy, whoever this guy Bob James is. Uh, didn't know anything about him, but I knew David Sanborn. This one was the one that was in the roughest condition. The cover, it wasn't in shrink. The cover's a little beat up. 
and I'm, I'm going to clean this one. It's not, it's the only one that seemed like it was a little dirty. I listened to it. It's got more pops and cracks and other, so I get that. But because of this, not knowing who Bob James was, but knowing who Dave Sanborn was, I thought, okay, well, I'll get the Bob James album that's there. Um, and again, it's jazzy. He's, he plays, uh, I think he's, was it more keyboards and stuff? He's, uh, yeah, he plays a lot of stuff, but so I went ahead and grabbed this one. This is, uh. 1986 also so like i said whoever this person was they they were a mid-80s jazz person so they did have the other two david sanborns that i already had in the shrink but i didn't get them so they somebody had this entire mid-80s section now moving on now this guy i see in the wild quite a bit i have i think one album by him lee written or written now written now um and so again they had a sl uh, uh, you know a, a chunk of his stuff this is from 1986 um you can see he's got that cool uh what do they call that some kind of a yeah uh, it's on here interesting sounding guitar thingy but he is guitar jazz he's more of a guitar jazz now the album i bought by him years ago wasn't quite it, it seemed like it was almost more leans toward towards pop more than jazz there were vocals and full songs and stuff so i wasn't sure about his stuff um, but he's listed as a jazz artist, so I got I got these, and yeah, every album maybe has that other album I got seems like it had a lot more vocals on it than before. It's an older album from like the early '80s, um, but these I've listened to, and they are they have an occasional song, kind of like Kenny G did, occasional song with vocals, but for the most part, it's all pretty smooth jazz. So this was 1986, Portrait from 1987. This one actually has featuring Kenny G on there, um, and the Yellow Jackets which I buy their stuff. 1988's Festival. So again, this person had Color Writ 1989. Had a good chunk of stuff from the mid to late 80s. So yeah, that was great to add. Now, stepping back to the uh, record store that I showed, the Nelson Rangel. Um, not in the dollar bin at that store, but I found in the $3 bin uh rainbow seeker by joe sample now my wife was flipping she missed over this and i said well joe sample is a a piano keyboard jazz person and i've picked up three or four of his albums in the past so this is the one of the earlier ones i've got from the late 70s 78 and so i thought yeah i'm gonna get that so this one again was in just a three dollar bin it was in great condition people who play jazz seem to take care of their stuff better it seems um so got that now um i totally drawn a blank where these two came from a different store no maybe they were from the same th three dollar no i'm totally drawing a blank anyway uh voices in the rain joe sample 1981 i believe so another one i was able to pick up there and then oasis 1985 so actually, when I go back and look at my Joe Sample collection now, it goes from the 78 one, but I've got like 81, 82, 83, 84, 85. I've got like a good chunk of them in that little era there. So yeah, piano jazz there. This one, going back to that thrift store, this one's still, I left this one in the shrink, but this is the uh, Clark Duke Project. Now I'm familiar with Clark and I, and I knew of his jazzy stuff, but I'd never heard these two together. Um, I've heard Duke with some, uh, I think I have him with Cobham too. Um, but this album is kind of interesting. It's got vocals and sound effects and stuff. It's funky. It's it's a little less jazz and a little more experimental uh, vocal type funky stuff. So kind of cool, but not quite what I knew. What I, I didn't know what I was getting into. Seems like I've seen, this is project number two, I think. Yeah, project two. And there is a Project One, which I may or may not have... I can't recall if I've seen that in a while, but I'll be on the lookout for it now. And then the main one at this particular thrift store that buys the storage units, the main one that jumped out at me is Point of View by Spyro Gyra. I rarely ever see any of the 80s Spyro Gyra stuff. It's always the earlier stuff and the early 80s that I tend to find. Morning Dance is everywhere. And they had a copy of Morning Dance there too. I have two copies of Morning Dance already. Um, but this era of Spire Jar, this would have been, uh, this was like 80, I think 88 or so. This is, like I said, the era right around the time I got into them in 86 and stuff. So I was buying these already. I saw them in concert a handful of times, actually in the 90s. 
And so, yeah, so as we're moving into these 80s stuff, um, you know, there are still vinyl releases of these, uh, but I have not found many of them. So this one I got, the cover was is really, it's bent right here, and I was kind of worried. It's just kind of bent up. But the vinyl was not affected at all, and the vinyl was in absolute great condition. So I was thrilled, and I'm like, yes, another one of the more obscure, harder to find. Uh, you know, these are probably available online, but I just don't see the mid 80s stuff as much as I do the early 80s stuff and the late 70s stuff by Spyro Gyro on vinyl. And I was glad to get that. So there you go. Just some fun vinyl. All that jazz. That's what we call this vinyl and all that jazz. So it was a bunch of jazz stuff, contemporary jazz, the kind of stuff that I enjoy the most. And that's it for this one. Thanks a lot for watching. Rock on and rock hard.